click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hey friends, in the previous lecture we have got to know about that how can we prepare alkyl halide using alkenes and that is what we have called it as the halogenation process. And now we are going to talk about how can we prepare the alkyl halide by using alkene and that kind of process is basically known as hydrohalogenation. So what is hydrohalogenation and what are the different types of hydrohalogenation? Let us talk about this thing. So talking about hydrohalogenation process, it is nothing but the addition of the uh, hydrogen halide on uh, across the that is carbon carbon double bond that is on alkene. So let me give you an information uh, regarding this one and that is what we could understand it in a nice way. Suppose if we have uh, an alkene like, if I am talking about the general reaction, suppose if we have alkene and that is R, C, H, double bond, C, H and this is R dash. So this could be a symmetrical alkene also that is suppose if this R and this R dash if they both are same and suppose in this case suppose if this is CH3 and this is CH3 so therefore it would be a symmetrical alkene and suppose if this R is like C2H5 and this is suppose CH3 itself so therefore this would be turned into an uh, that is a uh, unsymmetrical alkene suppose this R and this R dash suppose if the both are the same so therefore we could say then uh, this would be basically symmetrical one. And suppose if this is CH3 and this one is the H atom, so therefore this one would turn into an unsymmetrical alkene. But let me talk about that uh, later on, but let us talk about this one. So suppose if we have uh, a particular alkene like this one and if we are reacting with a hydrogen halide and that is suppose if I am uh, reacting it with that of uh, HX. So in this case basically the product that would be formed over here because this is a kind of addition reaction that could take place over here and we know that is alkenes they usually show addition reaction and that's the reason that one of uh, H will attach on among this two carbon that are being attached over here because of the carbon carbon double bond so one H can be easily attacked on uh, this carbon atom while the other one will attack on this uh, carbon atom forming an alkyl atom that is R it was here as it is now it is CH now the double bond would break in such a manner that one of this H that will be combined over here while here it was a single bond that would be sustained as it is and now this is CH, this is R dash and this X that would be attached over here. So this is how the alkyl halide is being prepared. And this kind of reaction is basically known as hydrohalogenation because uh, uh, we know that in this case that is in double bond we are not only adding the uh, halide that is our main concern but we are also adding up uh, the hydrogen atom so that's the reason the name is hydrohalogenation so this is the general reaction that we have talked about now let us move on to the next uh, one that is what we are concerned of so as we have discussed earlier that is the alkene can be a uh, unsymmetrical as well as it can be symmetrical also so based on that thing i'm uh, mentioning a reaction over here and let us see that which kind of product are being formed as a major product so for example that is uh, if you have mentioned over here that is so this is the alkene that we have and this is basically unsymmetrical uh, because once if we divide this uh, carbon carbon double bond from here then the total number of carbon on the either side it will be different and uh, now let us uh, do the hydrohalogenation process that is for example if i am uh, using that is hbr and it has been found that uh, the product that has been formed here is basically CH3, CH, that is PR over here, that is bromine atom, and here it would be CH3, along with that of CH3, CH2, CH2, and PR. Yes. So let me talk about this one, and uh, the further thing I would we'll going to talk about that is uh, the Markov Likos rule and the anti Markov Likos rule. So if you observe that is uh, there are two possible products that we could get uh, or we could obtain during the hydrohalogenation of this uh, propene. The first condition is uh, either uh, of this Br can be attached on uh, this of the carbon while the, the rest of the hydrogen that will attack on this of the carbon atom and uh, that is the reason that we could get this kind of product or where there is another possibility that we could find that the Br or the bromine atom is attacking on this carbon atom and the hydrogen atom is attacking on this uh, carbon atom during a formation of that is uh, this product. So but it has been formed that is 80% uh, 
of the product is basically this secondary alkyl halide and 20% of the product is been found to be this primary alkyl halide. The reason behind that is such rules that we are going to talk about that is Markovnik of rule. So what is Markovnik of rule and what is anti-Markovnik of rule? Let us talk about that. So this is Markovnik of rule that I am going to talk about and that is when an unsymmetrical reagent is treated with an unsymmetrical alkene then the negative part of the reagent is attached to the carbon-carbon double bond when the hydrogen atom is less. So let me talk about the previous example only so that you could understand it in a very better way that is so basically this is an unsymmetrical alkene as I have mentioned to you earlier and this is the unsymmetrical reagent the reason behind that is one of uh, that is uh, is uh, atom is hydrogen while the other one is that is bromine atom so basically this is an unsymmetrical reagent so when an unsymmetrical reagent is treated with an unsymmetrical alkene then the negative part of the reagent and in this case basically we could easily say that the bromine is the one which is more electronegative compared to that of the hydrogen and that is the reason that the bromine atom is more electronegative so therefore the negative part of the reagent will attack or will be attached to that carbon carbon double bond atom where the hydrogen atom is less so if we compare this to that is this is the carbon where they are attached to the carbon carbon double bond but here the number of hydrogen atom is 2 while here the number of hydrogen uh, that has been attached over here is basically 1 so making this carbon is acquiring basically less hydrogen atoms over here and that's the reason that the bromine atom will uh, preferably that will attach on this carbon atom and that's the reason if it follows Markovnik of rule then this is the desired product that we could get. So in this case, basically there is no particular condition that has been required uh, so as to give a major product. So this is the uh, normal reaction that takes place over here. And uh, let me give a few examples of that also. Suppose, suppose we are considering that is this molecule, that is CH3. Suppose this is the molecule that we have. And uh, suppose if we are doing the hydrohalogenation process and we are using that is uh, HBr. So here yeah, let me mention you that uh, the reactivity of the hydrogen halides that is uh, since we know that is the iodine have more atomic size compared to that of the bromine and chlorine so that's the reason that uh, this HI is more reactive than compared to that of HBr compared to that of HCl and that's the reason that uh, HI are more reactive but for example in this case we have included that is HBr and we have to do a reaction so this is the thing that we have got over here and uh, suppose if we know that this HBr is basically an unsymmetrical reagent and this molecule that we have is basically an unsymmetrical alkene so therefore obviously the negative part of the reagent because we are following the one of rule so therefore we could say that the negative part of the reagent that is this HBr that will attack that carbon carbon double bond where the hydrogen atom is less so in this case basically here the hydrogen atom here it is 2 but here there is no hydrogen atom so if we compare this to we could easily say that this carbon has atom has no hydrogen atom that is being tightly attached to it and that's the reason that the bromine atom will attack over here when the hydrogen atom will be attached over here so therefore resulting in the product that we could form over here is basically ch3 c here it would be that is the bromine atom that would be attached over here but the rest of the thing it would be remaining the same that is ch3 and this one would be converted into ch3 so this is the product that we have got over here but now let us uh, discuss about the IUPC nomenclature also because the thing is in the exam also they could give you such a question that how can you prepare that is 2 bromo 2 methyl propane using the particular alkene so suppose for this if you have to mention the uh, IUPC nomenclature then obviously we have to select the longest chain which consists of carbon carbon double so therefore this is the carbon number 1 this is the carbon number 2 and this is the carbon number 3 so in this case we could easily uh, estimate the IUPC name and that is basically this is 2 methyl prop 1 e so whenever the 2 methyl propene is treated with HBr then the major product that has been formed is basically 2 bromo 2 methyl that is propane so this is what we have so that is so this is what the marketing of rule is and whenever an unsymmetrical reagent is treated with an unsymmetrical alkene. So now let us talk about uh, the anti marconic of rule. So the anti marconic of rule is very much similar to this one but it has a lots of difference also. So what is that? Let me talk about. So anti marconic rule is opposite that of the marconic of rule. 
but it's a, it is also an addition ratio so that is the similarity of it and uh, the difference between this is that is when an unsymmetrical reagent is treated with an unsymmetrical alkene the negative part of the reagent will attach to the carbon in the uh, carbon carbon double bond having more number of hydrogen atom in the previous one we have got to know that is uh, uh, the negative part of the reagent it attaches the carbon atom which, which possesses that is less number of hydrogen atom but in this case it is possessed uh, or it, it gets attached to the carbon which possesses more number of hydrogen atom but in presence of peroxide yes suppose if this kind of peroxide if we add in a particular reaction so that we could get um, the different product so in the previous example where we have got to know that is uh, the product that we have got over here it was basically uh, secondary also uh, during the first uh, process where we have mentioned about the hydrohalogenation and in this uh, that is in this reaction the one which has basically followed the Markovnikov rule so we have got over here as tertiary alkyl halide but meanwhile when we are reacting with uh, that is uh, during uh, anti Markovnikov rule by using that is uh, peroxide then the different product is what we could get suppose if we have uh, the reactant that is CH3 CH and here suppose there is double bond CH2 so obviously it is an unsymmetrical alkene and this unsymmetrical alkene is suppose if it has been treated with an unsymmetrical reagent that is HBr and for which if I have not used any kind of reagent uh, or any kind of excess uh, that is uh, uh, substance so that it would change the reaction then it would give us that is uh, a marker if according to the marker control then it would give us a that is secondary alkyl halide but suppose if I am using a certain kind of other reagents like that of uh, the peroxide and in this case suppose I could use benzoyl peroxide or H2O2 so if this kind of peroxide if that are being involved in this case then it is but obvious to understand that is uh, the negative part of the reagent that is nothing but the Br- minus. So therefore in spite of uh, that is attacking on the carbon carbon double bond which has or which uh, which carbon possesses less number of hydrogen atom so now this will be attacked on the carbon atom which will uh, have less number of hydrogen atom over here so the product that we could get uh, as a major product is basically ch3 ch now this h has been added over here so therefore this one will become ch2 and uh, the rest of the thing is this one will become ch2 and here it would be br that would that would be attached over here so this is the major product that we have got and this is because of the anti molecular rule and uh, suppose if this is the same one that we have did earlier let me talk about that one that is this one and the propene was treated with HBr and in that case we have didn't use any kind of uh, excess reagent and that's the reason that uh, we have got uh, that is uh, that is two bromo that is propane as a major product but meanwhile when we have used that is H2O2 or when we have uh, made the reaction in presence of peroxide then uh, we have got that is uh, one bromo propane so that is different so this is what we have discussed in our early lecture also that is uh, uh, there are two kind of addition reactions so this is the kind of addition reaction which gives a different product so that was based on the marker rule as well as the addition uh, that is addition of the HBr using that is anti marker rule so that's it so this was a few examples that we have discussed about uh, the addition of uh, that is HBr in an unsymmetrical as well as a symmetrical alkene that is hydrohalogenation so that's it this is what I want to talk about so thank you friends for watching this video I hope you have understood this video very clearly and you have understood that uh, what uh, kind of rule that has been obeyed using different kind of reagents so thank you friends for watching this video I hope you have understood this video very clearly and will share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel thank you so much